Hi all and welcome back to the Macbeth Explained and a Take With Me series. Uh, in today's video we're going to be looking at Act 4, Scene 2. It's a very short scene um, as you can see and it's an unlikely scene to come up um, in an exam. Um, this is because the scene uh, includes, this scene basically is um, Lady Macduff's death. Um, and even though that event is important, especially to the characters of Macbeth, Lady Macbeth and Macduff, Lady Macduff as a character herself is not really um, a key character in the text. And so it's very unlikely that A, you'll be given an extract um, from the scene or B, you will be using the scene as part of your analysis. Nevertheless, and we'll be going through it, explaining it. Um, we won't be spending tons and tons of time on this. I mean, I won't be breaking it down in um, a whole lot of detail just because it's not really a necessary scene for you to sort of know and revise. But I will be picking out some key quotes that you could potentially use. So without further ado, if you'd like to go grab anything that you might need, um, highlighters, pens, you copy up the text and press play when you're ready. Scene two, Fife. And if you remember, Fife is the land um, that Macduff owns. So he's the Thane of Fife, the Lord of Fife. So in Fife, Macduff's castle, and to Lady Macduff, her son, and Ross. Lady Macduff is saying, what had he done to make him fly the land? She's asking, what has Macduff done to make him run away? Ross says, you must have patience, madam. She says, he had none. Why well, should I have patience if Macduff hasn't got the patience to stay? He left. His flight was madness when our actions do not, our fears do make us traitor, uh, traitors. She thinks that it's a mistake for Macduff to run away because she says, if we've not done anything to make us look guilty, him running away or us being fearful of Macbeth will make us look guilty. So she thinks that Macduff's actions of running away will make them look guilty or will make them look like traitors. Ross says, you know not whether it was his wisdom or his fear. He's saying maybe it was a smart thing to do. Maybe it wasn't just, uh, he wasn't doing it out of fear. Lady Macbeth says, wisdom to leave his wife, to leave his babes, his mansion and his titles in a place from whence himself does fly. She's saying, I don't really see what's intelligent about leaving your wife, your children, your house and everything that you own in the place from which you're literally too afraid to stay. So she's basically saying, if Macduff has got a reason to leave Scotland, why would he leave everything behind, including his family? He loves us not. He wants the natural touch. But the poor wren, the most diminutive of birds, will fight her young ones in her nest against the owl. She's saying even a tiny bird, if it was protecting its nest, would fight a bigger bird. She's saying if Macduff cared about his family, he would have stayed and fought for them. All is the fear and nothing is the love, as little is the wisdom, whether flights or runs against all reason. She's saying that Macduff's actions were guided by fear, not intelligence. He doesn't have like a grand master plan and certainly not love. And this whole scene links in actually really nicely with the theme of betrayal, because even though Macduff is actually the opposite of a traitor, he's loyal to Malcolm and he's done what he's done to fight against the traitor Macbeth and to prove his loyalty to Malcolm, in a way, Macduff is a traitor to his family. Lady, Mac uh, Lady Macduff feels betrayed by Macduff's actions. So it's a really interesting take on the theme of betrayal. And if you are looking at the theme of betrayal, it would be a sort of more unusual and perceptive uh, aspect of betrayal to look at. It would definitely make an essay stand out. Ross says, my dearest cuz, I pray you school yourself, but for your husband, he's noble, wise, judicious, and best knows the fits of the reason, of the season. I dare not speak much further, but cruel are the times. We are traitors and do not know ourselves when we hold rumour from what we fear, yet know not what we fear. He's sort of saying no. He's saying like, trust me, Macduff knows what he's doing. And he's saying, but let's not speak about this anymore because he's saying these are strange, unusual, violent times and people are turning out to be traitors and they don't even know that they're tra traitors. So he's painting this image of Macbeth's rule. And we already know by this point that Macbeth has turned into a tyrant, but he's sort of pointing out the fact that literally anyone under Macbeth's rule can be accused of being a traitor, uh, even if they don't even know what they've done. He's painting an image of Macbeth. Um, Macbeth's rule as a, a time where nothing is safe. You can't even think or speak too uh, freely for fear of being accused of treason. He says, 
but float upon a wild and violent sea each way and move. He's saying, like, rumours are really dangerous. Um, and that's why he doesn't want to keep talking about this. He says, I take my leave of you. I have to go. Shall not be long, but I'll be here again. I'm, I'm going now, but I'll, I'll be back. Things at the worst will cease or else climb upward to what they were before. He's saying... Things are, are as bad as they're going to get. And we've reached like such a rock bottom that the only way is basically up or at least back to what things were like. My pretty cousin, blessing upon you. Lady Macbeth, Macduff says, fathered he is. She's talking about her son. Fathered he is and yet he's fatherless. So she's talking about her son. She's referring to the fact that he should have a father, but in, he's fatherless in the sense that Macduff isn't actually there to protect him. Ross says, I am so much a fool. Should I stay longer? I would be, it would be my disgrace and your discomfort. I take my leave at once. He's saying it's not wise for me to stay any longer. I have to go. And he leaves. And the dialogue that we've got coming up is very much just like a little bit of sort of witty banter, like quite playful between Macduff and Lady Macduff. We won't spend too long on it. So she says, Sarah, your father's dead. Um, but what and what will you do now? How will you live? The son says, as birds do, mother, I'll live like a bird. What? With worms and flies. With what I get, I mean, and so do they. He's saying, well, birds manage to survive with whatever they can find. I'll do the same. She says, poor bird, thou wouldst never fear the net nor lime, the pitfall nor the gin. She's saying you're kind of like, she's calling him fearless. The son says, why should I, mother? Poor birds are they not, are, sorry, poor birds they are not set for. My father is not dead, for all you're saying. And the son is saying he doesn't really need to be worried because he knows the truth is that Macduff isn't dead. Yes, he is dead. From world sorry, how wilt thou do for a father? She's saying, yeah, he is dead, because as in he's not here. So what will you do for a father? He says, nay, how will you do for a husband? She says, why I can buy me 20 at any market? He says, and then you'll buy them to sell them again. Yeah, if you can buy 20 husbands at any market, you'll get rid of them just as fast. She says, thou speakest with all thy wit, and yet in faith with wit enough for thee. Was my father a traitor, mother? Aye, that he was. So what is a traitor? Why, one that swears and lies. And here they enter a really interesting discussion about what makes a traitor. So Lady Macduff is calling Macduff a, tra a traitor because he's betrayed them. He's betrayed his family. And the son is asking what a traitor is. And she says it's someone who swears and lies. So the son says, and be, all and be all traitors that do so. So does everyone that swear and lie, um, is everyone that does that a traitor? She says everyone that does so is a traitor and must be hanged. He says, and must they all be hanged that swear and lie? Everyone. Who must hang them? So if everyone that swears and lie needs to be hanged, who's going to hang them? Lady Macbeth said, Lady Macduff says, why? The honest men. Yeah, the people that aren't lying, they should be hanging the traitors. And the sunset here makes a really good uh, point. He says, then the liars and swearers are fools, for there are liars and swearers enough to beat the honest men and hang them up. He's saying, well, actually, there's so much more, there's... There are so many more traitors and liars in the world than honest men that if the honest men try to hang the traitors and the liars, the traitors and the liars will outnumber them, beat them up and hang them instead. Lady Macduff says, now God help thee, poor monkey. And how will thou do for a father? And the sense here is that he's almost kind of managed to outwit her. He says, if he were dead, you would weep for him. If you would not, it were a good sign that I should quickly have a new father. He's saying, listen, if my, if my father was actually dead, you'd be crying about it. And if you stopped crying about it, then I would know I was about to have a new father anyway. Lady Macduff says, poor prattler, how thou talkest. And she sort of kind of laughs it off. And we have this really sweet moment of affection between mother and son and levity. This makes us a little bit more attached to the characters. And of course, it makes what is about to happen, what we know for a fact will happen because we already know the orders that Macbeth has given this will make it a lot more heartbreaking um, to the audience so this is the point where the messenger comes in so the messenger says to Lady Macduff bless you fair dame I am not to you known though in your state of honour I am perfect I doubt some danger does approach you nearly, if you will take a homely man's advice. Be not found here, hence with your little ones, to fright you thus, methinks I am too savage. To do worse to you were fell cruelty. He's saying, as much as I don't want to worry you and your little children, I have to advise you to get away from here with your kids. And I, I frightening you like this is horrible, but not 
warning you would be even worse. Yeah? It would be cruelty. It'd be evil for him not to say something. Which is too nigh your person. Heaven preserve you. I dare abide no longer. Yeah? And he doesn't st dare stay any longer. So again, this idea that everyone under Macbeth's rule is fearful. Exit. Lady Macduff says, whither should I fly? I have done no harm. She makes a great point here. She says, why should I run away? I've not done anything wrong. She knows she's not betrayed Macbeth. She's not done any crime. So she thinks, well, I've got no reason to run away. I've not done anything wrong. But I remember now I am in this earthly world where to do harm is often laudable. To do good, sometime accounted dangerous folly. She's saying, but... At the end of the day, she lives on Earth, and sometimes living on Earth, living in this world, unfortunately means that doing something bad will get you praised, and doing something good can sometimes be really dangerous. So she also knows that just because you're doing the right thing doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be treated that way, or it doesn't necessarily mean that you won't be punished for it. Why then, alas, do I put up that womanly defence to say I have done no harm? She's saying, why do I even bother to say that I've done anything wrong, that I've done nothing wrong, when I know that this wouldn't stop me from, you know, getting punished. Enter murderers. She says, what are these faces? The first murderer says, where is your husband? She says, I hope in no place so unsanctified, where such as thou mayst find him. She's hoping that he won't be found. First murderer says, he's a traitor. The son says, thou liest, thou shag-haired villain. And the, the son is sort of, we've seen here the son take you know, Lady Macduff sort of being really insulting towards Macduff, like completely on the chin, have a, a laugh and a joke about it. But now that the murderer is insulting his father, he sort of kicks off and he's angry and, and, and offended. And he, he says, you're lying. And he calls him a villain. The first murderer says, what, you egg? Stabbing him, young fry of treachery. So the egg and fry is like a, a, a pun. It's a, a play on words here. Um, unexpected in such a dark scene because we've literally just got an adult murdering a child. But he is basically accusing um, uh, uh, Macduff of being a traitor. And by proxy, his son is also uh, treacherous. The son says, he has killed me, mother. Run away, I pray you. He dies and exit Lady Macduff, crime murder, exit murderers following her. So we don't see Lady Macduff die uh, on screen or on the stage, uh, as it were. We see her son die. Um, but of course, we will find out later on that she was killed, as well as the rest of Macduff's children and the rest of his family. And that's the end of the scene. So as you can tell, it's not really a very key scene. Probably the only way you'd use this scene is for the theme of um, betrayal and loyalty just because like, there's a really interesting point being made here uh, by Lady Mac Macduff that in a way Macduff is a traitor because he's betrayed his family by leaving them behind apart from that I wouldn't worry too much about revising the scene and knowing it too well uh, it's very short and not at all a key scene or a scene likely to come up so I hope that this was helpful as usual if you have any questions about this scene this act characters themes plots um, exam um responses exam questions the assessment objectives anything at all please feel free to ask in the comments um and i hope you join us all in the next video